Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, September 13, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Pretty interesting day all around. I think you're going to want to hear this. The market's in a very interesting spot. Volatility is coming back to the market. We've talked about this happening in mid-September. Today is September 13th. This is the middle of September. Now, what's interesting is, and we're not going to necessarily take a look at the chart, but just as a concept, the VIX today, which is a measure of volatility to an extent, I'll explain in a minute, that was actually down almost 8% by the end of the day. It hardly was up all day, maybe for a moment or two, but the concept is, when I say volatility is coming back to the market, it doesn't necessarily mean just yet a spike in the VIX. It means we're going to see some back and forth activity. We talked about the fact that this week is quadruple witching options expiration. We're also into an important area. There's three lines on the chart. We're going to get to those later. Don't let them confuse you. We're still just talking daily chart stuff. This is a continuation from the weekend video. So on Friday, they closed pretty much close to that 445.14 number. Well, guess what? Today, they spiked through it, and they bounced up away back up north, which is interesting nonetheless. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. First, let's wrap up the daily chart. Let's look at it from a big picture perspective. Again, ignore the lines. Just look at the candles. Look at the structure of the daily chart. So a couple of things take place. We talked about them being on time. So they're on time. They tested an important spot. They're doing the same thing they've done a few previous times. They top out, they have a pullback, and then they make a new high. Well, we don't know if they're going to make a new high, but we know that they topped out. They had a pullback. They were on time. They came into an important spot, and now they bounced at the end of the day today. They're still below the 20-period moving average. That's still, technically speaking, a tough spot for the market to be in. But again, the 20 isn't necessarily the end-all, be-all. They've been back and forth through it. They're riding the 20-period moving average. The 50 is much more important than the 20. Of note, puzzle piece on the table. The other day, we had a trend line drew in that looked like that, drawn in, English, they didn't touch the trend line, but we need to be aware of the trend line. It's a trend line in concept. It's not a perfect trend line from low to low and so on. It's a conceptual trend line. Remember, we're not in search of perfect. We're in search of being on the correct side of the tape for the correct trades. All right, now let's drill down a little bit to the 240 chart and beyond. So what we're looking at here is that important spot of 445.14. That was this breakup candle. That was the low. And guess what? They came into the low the last three days in a row, essentially. And guess what? They came close to the low on Friday. They spiked that number today and bounced back up away from it. And by the way, take notice of where they closed today. Again, no accidents or coincidences you don't see it on this chart, you'll see it on another chart, but you'll notice the line at 446.58, they closed at 446.56, two pennies below. Quite interesting. The daily chart close is a different type of settlement. This is the intraday close. What you'll notice is on the 240-minute chart, they did not, and I repeat, did not close a 240-minute candle below an important number, 445.14. That's important in and of itself. Write that down on a sticky note. What about the 120-minute chart? Same routine. They have not closed any 120-minute candle below 445.14. That's an equally important spot on this chart as it is on the 240 chart. Same breakup candle low. Once they, if they do close below that number, that's a different outlook. That's a different setup. That's a different structure on the chart altogether. Testing important spots is what they do. They run tests. Why? Because the market is headed to a destination. Today, 
The destination was around the test of 445.14. It was a successful test today. Can they gap below it tomorrow? Of course they can. We don't know whether they will or they won't. Today, it was a successful test. That's the way we look at the market. What about a 180-minute chart? Who looks at that? I do. Guess what? No close below. I was just double-checking other time frames. Nice tail on the 180. How about the hourly chart? Remember that 446.58, that's this line here? That was a gap. And guess what? They did not, yet did not close above or back above that spot. They made an attempt at the end of the day. It's an hourly number. It's an important spot. A recapture of that spot is an important development for the bull case. Also, here's a little side note. You know how once every few months I discuss the fact that when the futures contract rolls from one contract to another, in this case, we're currently trading, and both are trading, but we were currently trading the September contract. Now, we're going to roll into the December contract or the Z contract. And all I say each and every time we do this once a quarter is weird stuff happens around a roll. Also, we have quadruple witching options expiration. So you have a mini stack around weird stuff. And oh, by the way, we still have this shenanigan tail candle from last Friday. We're pretty far away. They went in the other direction. But nevertheless, it's still on the chart. What's it doing there? Of note, not sure that in and of itself is a puzzle piece, but it's kind of in the box, not necessarily on the table. It's in the box top. Now. As for Inside the Numbers, I made a separate video for Inside the Numbers today. We had a little bit of a bonanza from an SPY trading perspective. So what I'm going to do in this video is splice that in. It's the normal stuff. There were no stocks on the move today that hit their price targets, so don't worry about that. And then we'll be back to talk about the other stuff on the other side. We're going to show you how not only did we catch low of day today and the reasons why, but we're going to go over other trades that all happened within the first 90 minutes of the trading day. Who's this for? It's for two primary groups of people. A is for traders who are already members of Inside the Numbers and B for traders who are active in the market in the S&P 500 during the trading day or would like to be active in the S&P 500 during the trading day, whether it's with options, exchange-traded products, leveraged products, the futures contract, the ES contract, even the micro contracts, any or all of the above. This is who that's for. What is inside the numbers? It's quite simple. It's a service I produce every single day where I provide two primary things. A, stocks on the move. Stocks that are moving in the pre-market that we can identify that zone. What is that zone? They're headed to a destination. One of two things is going to happen. They're either going to have a reaction in the other direction or they're going to hang out for a cup of coffee. The second thing inside the numbers is for is for S&P 500 traders. As such, I provide commentary that starts long before the opening bell and extends through about 90 minutes of the morning session and then into the afternoon if it's an active day. To get the full and complete concept, let's go over what happened from before the opening bell through the morning session so that you have an idea of whether or not inside the numbers is something that you would like to take advantage of. I'll give you a clue in advance. Traders of Inside the Numbers had several trades today. It was what we call a bonanza. It's a Monday morning. We're waking up to a snapback from the market being down pretty hard on the previous Friday. We want to get the lay of the land. Is it a dead cat bounce? Will it turn out to be something more? The pre-market commentary is to set the table so that we can show up in uniform ready to go. I'm referencing back information from the weekend video in this particular case. This is where the whole thing ties together. The videos every night, lazy e-mini trader, and inside the numbers. It's a three-pillar approach with continuing education with an optional PhD. 
So let's get into the numbers. Last week, they get into a zone, so we're looking for a bounce. Doesn't mean it has to happen, but the awareness is they should find stability in this zone, at minimum for a period of time. So they stop there on Friday. What will happen on Monday? We have an early pivot. That's what we're using to determine the bull or the bear case. 448.85 is our early pivot. This is when the market was up big in the pre-market, but it's still the early pivot. Are they going to go much higher or are they going to find overhead resistance? This was posted at zero dark 30. We're now focused on the SPY five minute chart. Right of the vertical is today's activity. And what you can see is the high of day was 448.92. The opening print was 448.65. They opened below, they ran up to the number, and they fell away. So far, that was high of day. Discussed as an important spot, the early pivot at zero dark 30. Let's put one in the column for the good guys. Opening above does some stuff. We don't have to worry about it. You just saw they didn't do that. We have stuff above as a just in case. We want to get the lay of the land. We need to know both sides of the tape early in the morning. That's part of the pregame routine. Now let's go see what happened as we start to get closer to the opening bell. They got stronger leading up into the open. So the thought process is buying begets buying, FOMO sets in, then comes panic buying. We'll let them go at the open. We don't want to chase them. We want to get the lay of the land before uncovering the opportunity that lies within. This is about a mindset showing up in the morning. As we get closer to the opening bell, 921, food for thought. The comments about panic buying. We'll see how high they pushed this morning, but the concept has them putting in a morning pivot high. Once they do, we'll see a pullback, failure, or otherwise. We don't know yet. Think of it as a probable pre-market schematic. Okay, stay with me. Let's see what else we have, such as the 924 post. For aggressive traders, 448.85 is the pivot and was magnetic, which tells us it's a spot and it's important. Could take some time, but even if they spike it, there should be some resistance and a pullback from around that spot. It's an aggressive early short opportunity. It starts to look wrong with candle closes above 449.50. There's your aggressive trader setup. As a refresher, back to the five-minute chart, they opened right below it. They ran up two and a few pennies above 448.85, and they were rejected from 448.85, which was overhead resistance. Okay, let's see what else we have. By 931, if you took the short at the open, need to book profit along the way as they fall and hold a trailer for 448 or lower. It's a scalp trade to start with and the potential for more. At 931, you don't know that the market's going to collapse all the way down. They were very strong in the pre-market, so you start with the norm, what normally happens most of the time. By 9.34, traders who were short should have booked profit by now, and it was, in fact, a nice trade. We're expecting some back and forth. Let's see what else we have. For me, by 9.36, the short was over at 4.48. I was completely content within the first five, six minutes of the trading day, first five, six minutes of the week to book a nice, easy profit. It's a great way to start the week, even if you leave some opportunity on the table. There's another trade around the corner, such as 938. If they get to and below 447, I would buy it. 447, give or take, is support. Back to the five-minute chart. This line here is 447. This candle was the low, 446.77. They turned around, and the high in the next candle was 447.79. That's over a dollar bounce or about 10 S&P handles, ES handles from a spike below 447. And what we had was 446.50 is still important from last week. So you had a little bit of a safety net on that opportunity. Let's keep going. So by 944, traders who took this one need to book profit along the way. The goal is to get them back to and above 448. Remember, they got to 447.99. No accidents, no coincidences. 
Now, let's fast forward a little bit in time, see what else happened during the morning session. How about a 10 o'clock post? If they fell more, I would buy them again at 4.46.30, give or take. Never know. If they're willing to give it, I'm willing to take it. Same scalp trade routine. For this one, you have to go to a one minute chart to see it. 4.46.30 is this line here. This candle low, 4.46.21. Couple of minutes later, the high was 4.46.91. Just a scalp trade, but the concept of the numbers work nonetheless. The next thing we'll look at is the 10.10 post. Next important spot is 455.50. Candle closes below can be a problem for the bull. So at this point, what I'm saying is, I'm not doing anything. I'm keeping the profits in the pocket. They gave a number of quick trades this morning. We want to wait for the ideal setup. I'm watching. By 1017, how about a just in caser? This is an area we've been discussing in the videos every night. 445.14, and therefore, if they drop them to that spot, there would be a test administered, meaning under normal garden variety conditions, they're not going to just blow right on through. Here's a 15-minute chart, same vertical. 445.14 is that number. The low of day was not a lot lower than that. It was a spike of it. They got below it. They snapped back. Low of day, 444.87. They ran a retest, and they're trying to recover. It's a look at a combination of what we discuss each and every night and then how it unfolds during the trading day for Inside the Number members. So that was a chunk of the morning commentary. Hope you get the point. Hope you want to come over and try out Inside the Numbers. Thanks for tuning in. I'm David Frost, My Strategic Forecast, and this was a snapshot of Inside the Numbers and how it works together with everything else we're doing in the three-pillar approach. I appreciate all the members of Inside the Numbers who work very, very hard each and every day. This is a business, and we treat it as such. What about Camp IWM today? Well, this is very interesting, and this should come as no surprise to anybody. Couple of things with Camp IWM. They were also on time, but into an, an interesting area. So while the SPY was running a test of a very important spot, the IWM is also running a test of a very important spot. What was that spot? How about this breakup candle low, 220.57? We've talked about this. What was low today? 220.25, and then what do they do? Here's a shorter duration chart. 220.57, they rip back up in the other direction after running a test of what? You got it. The same stuff happens over and over and over again, which is why this is designed as a learning opportunity. So here's what we look at from this point forward in the IWM. Do they stay above that spot and continue to rally up? Therefore, we would have had somewhat of a stack. I don't know about a full stack, but it's a pretty good stack. You have moving averages. You have a breakup candle low. You're on time, and I guess I'm going to call it a full stack. So we should get a further bounce to the upside in the IWM under normal garden variety conditions. Look what happened on Friday. They closed slightly below those moving averages. We talked about it in the weekend video. Today, they spike everything and snap back in the other direction. They need to get back above the 100-period moving average to really complete and get follow-through to the upside. If they can get above this particular high here, 225.29, they'll have more room in the northern direction. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Here's something interesting. They were really not down today. They were positive to flat most or all of the day. They are my second favorite market leading indicator. IWM is number one. They are my favorite canary in the coal mine. Why were they up all day when everything else was down? Were they telling us it was a phony decline and they were going to bounce eventually after running said tests? The trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew are the test admins. They're still hovering above the 
200 period moving average. That's not necessarily good support, but remember, it's an all the same market scenario. If you're going to get a bounce further up north in the S&P 500 and the IWM, it's likely the transports are going to come along for the ride. What about the folks out in Silicon Valley? Q people. Not so great at the end of the day for Q people. Finished basically flat on the day. We'll just call it a rounding error. They're still hovering around that important spot, 376.50. They did run a test and bounce off of its 20-period moving average. We'll need to see follow-through for the bull case tomorrow. If not, it could be a tell on the other side. Remember, we're the umpire calling balls and strikes. We look at each chart independent of one another, and then we come out with an ultimate conclusion in the end. Not a great day in the end for the Q people. The financials, on the other hand, were up over 1% today. That is a pretty good day. They're still stuck under the 20-period moving average. But again, if we get follow-through in these markets, it'll likely pop above there or at least run into it tomorrow. Net-net, there's really nothing going on in the XLF. They're in somewhat of a no-man's-land scenario. Maybe they have another rally, maybe they don't, but until and unless they break well below these moving averages, we can't say that we have a direction one way or the other. And Smash Mouth, up two bucks, still pushing on the highs. Remember, it was a poor close on Friday, but we weren't necessarily convinced that it was the end of the road for the SMH or Smash Mouth. Yeah, it was a tail candle, Maybe this is just a retrace of a tail candle, but they're at or around the all-time highs. We're not going to make a federal case. We're going to look at it and say it was an up day. They were up two bucks. They're above all the moving averages. And guess what? The trend is your friend until she decides it's over. It's always her final decision. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.